First, we started with our elastic collision, where both masses of both objects are the same. As you can see, there are rubber bands between each object so that there will be a collision and it one will bounce off the other. And those are our numbers. And here's our work. In an elastic collision, where the mass of the first object is equal to the mass of the second object, the velocity final should equal 2 times the mass of the second object over the mass of the first object plus the mass of the second object, all multiplied by the velocity initial. In simpler terms, the velocity final equals the velocity initial in a perfect elastic collision when the mass of the first object is equal to the mass of the second object. Now, our data the masses we used were 1 for each because they're equal and our velocity initial was 0.653 and our velocity final was 0.619 pretty close if you plug those into the equation you'll see that the velocity final should have equaled 0.653 but with a percent error of 5 the range we found was 0.6203 to 0.6856 and then when you plug our number into the percent error equation you can see that it was a 5.02% error. And uh, that means that all of this work shows that our trial was 5.02% from being a perfect elastic collision. In this elastic collision, our trial is representing the first object with a greater mass hitting the second object with a lesser mass. The first object's velocity will be measured and after it hits the second object, the second velocity final will be measured. And here are the results. And here is the work. In an elastic collision where one mass is greater than the other, the velocity final is equal to the mass of one object minus the mass of the other over the sum of the two masses all multiplied by the velocity initial. In other words, the velocity final is going to be one-third of the velocity initial. The data we collected gave us a velocity initial of 0.722 meters per second and left us with a final velocity of 0.241 meters per second. One plugged into the equation like so, we are left with a velocity final of 0 0.2406 meters per second, which is very, very close to the 0 0.241 that we got in the trial. With the added 5% error, we are given a range of 0 0.2286 to 0 0.2527, which we beat greatly considering when plugging in the percent error equation we are only left with a 0.13 percent error which isn't even one percent so this proves that our equation in wh where one mass was greater than the other is very very close to being perfectly elastic in this trial, we will be testing an inelastic collision when the mass of the first object strikes the second object, which has a lesser mass. On the end of each object, there is a magnet, so when the first one strikes the lesser mass object, they will connect, and the velocities will be shown here. And here's the work for those results. An elastic collision, M1 is greater than M2. If we put it into simpler terms, and we have the first mass being twice as great as the second mass, and we have our initial velocity of the first mass just equaling 1, then we could plug it into the equation for this collision, which is 
the final velocity equals the first mass divided by the first mass plus the second mass times the initial velocity of the first mass. That's what we did here and we ended up with the final velocity equaling two-thirds of the initial velocity of the first mass. Now for our data we got 0 0.986 meters per second for our initial velocity of the first mass and we still have the first mass equaling twice as much as the second mass and when we did our experiment we got 0 0.631 meters per second for our final velocity now we plug it in and we get two-thirds times the initial velocity again and that'll come out to be the final velocity equals 0 0.6573 meters per second now for the percent error of our experiment and doing it on paper it's 0 0.631 minus 0 0.6573 divided by 0 0.6573 over and that's all the absolute value times 100 and the percent error would only be 4 percent. In this final trial we will be testing an inelastic collision when the masses of both objects are equal. Once again the magnets will be used. Here are our results on the lab quest and here's the work using those results. In an inelastic collision, where the mass of the first object is equal to the mass of the second object, the velocity final should equal the mass of the first object over the mass of both objects combined, and then that number multiplied by the velocity initial. In simpler terms, the velocity final should equal one half of the velocity initial. Now here's our data. And as you can see, for both of our masses, we use 1 because they are equal. And our velocity initial was 0.627 meters per second. And our velocity final was 0.256 meters per second. And when you plug that into uh, the equation, you can see that when you multiply 0 0.627 by 1 half, the answer is 0.3135. With a 10% error, the range that we find for the number we should have is 0.28215 through 0.34485. We weren't so lucky and in our equation to find the percent error we found that we had a 18.34 percent error which isn't particularly good however that was what we found with our trial of the inelastic collision. Thank you so much for watching our video.